In Australia, we have over 200 different species of frogs, but arguably none as handsome or as endangered as the corroboree frog. Like a lot of things up in the mountains, they seem to do everything the hard way. <laughs> Their habitat, for starters, is limited to just a few boggy areas high in the mountains. And according to alpine ecologist Dr Ken Green, their populations are in serious decline. Here we'd probably be lucky to have 100 uh, frogs total left in the wild. Any animal that has a strange life cycle becomes endangered nowadays. It's, uh, it's the frogs that lay a thousand eggs and just leave them and go away. They're the ones that are surviving. It's the frogs with these very specialised habits that are the ones that are endangered. The chytrid fungus, which has already caused a number of amphibian extinctions around the world, is responsible for this local decimation. But why it spread so rapidly here is still a matter of contention. Why did the chytrid fungus suddenly take off? And there's various theories about that. One is that um, basically the water in these ponds is warming uh, due to climate change. Perhaps uh, it's warming because the, uh, the ponds haven't got as much water in, they're shallower and therefore they're warmer. And another thought is that uh, because they're shallower, you're getting more uh, UV coming in with the you know, hole in the ozone layer, UV light uh, causes problems to frogs. So there's a whole suite of things which are uh, you know, conspiring against frogs in the high country. There are two types of corroboree frog, the northern and southern, but both in frog terms have a very low reproductive output. In the wild, they live for eight to ten years, maturing at four or five, and they lay a single clutch of 25 eggs each breeding year. In the past, that's been enough, but uh, not anymore, it seems. To save the corroboree frog from certain extinction, scientists are developing captive breeding programs. And one of the most successful is housed in a couple of converted shipping containers at Tidbinbilla Nature Reserve, just near Canberra. In this quarantine facility, we have about uh, 1,400 frogs. Um, and each of these containers holds a number of frogs from a particular clutch and a particular location. The frogs here at Tidbinbilla are the northern variety of the species. And as wildlife ecologist Dr Murray Evans explains, they were collected as eggs from some of the last wild populations remaining in the Brindabellas. The reason we collect the eggs from the wild and not the adult frogs is that eggs don't have the chytrid fungus. The neat thing about the eggs is that they don't have keratin and chytrid fungus needs keratin. And keratin doesn't become present in frogs until they're tadpoles or particularly until they're um, adults when it's all across their skin. The skin of the corroboree frog is quite distinctive. Each one has a different, slightly different pattern, a bit like fingerprints. You can actually identify them from photographs. And for no apparent reason, some of them have vivid blue stripes on their underbellies. It's one of those scientific mysteries, I'm afraid. Another endearing anomaly is the way they appear to walk everywhere rather than jump. But Murray assures me that's more adaptation than affectation. They much prefer walking. And it kind of makes sense when you're on a something like spongy sphagnum. It's probably better to do walking rather than jumping. They really are quite extraordinary. And if it were not for this program, the corroboree frog wouldn't stand a chance. It looks like they're facing the very real threat of extinction. Janini wetlands, where these frogs came from, there were once you know, many hundreds, if not thousands, up there. Um, about two weeks ago, we recorded 24 up there. And we can boost the survival rate of the eggs from something like 10% in the wild to about 80 or 90% in this facility. But while ever we've got a backup population in captivity, it gives us options for the future. Ultimately, the aim is to breed from this captive population, then reintroduce their offspring back into the wild. I don't think we'll ever find a magic bullet for chytrid fungus. I think what we have to do is allow these guys the opportunity to develop some level of resistance, which has been shown in other populations of frogs that have been knocked down to low levels. If they can survive past the initial um, decline, then there's some chance they can develop resistance. It's a huge challenge, but one I think we have to rise and meet. If we accept the loss of corroboree frogs, then we're just setting ourselves up to go down the path of losing more and more species.